They were known as colourful characters, and every club had two or three of them. John Barnes was one of both Essendon and Geelong, colourful yet highly accomplished at the same time. Welcome, Barnesy. Mike, how are you? You're good, mate. You were a bit of a larrikin, weren't you? Well, if you call Larry and a bloke that liked to have a good time, I'd have to say yes, mm. most definitely. Mm. Is it true that in your first stint at Essendon that you weren't allowed to warm up with the players pre-game? I, uh, in the reserves, yeah, I was, uh, I was pretty hard to coach, Mike. I'd come down from the country and had no parental guidance as a 16 half year old kid and you uh, put the jigsaw puzzle together after that, mate. I think I had ADHD, which wasn't recognised You then. mean that? You're serious oh, about that? definitely. Yeah. I've still got it now. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to worry me, I don't think. Your antics are legendary, aren't they? Like well, the egg throwing, uh, the masks. Look. Um, I, pretending to rob teammates' houses. You would you jack up cars and steal tyres yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Like that, was, that was what I thought footy clubs were all about. And the fun that we had down Geelong and at Essendon was just... You know, I kept the, the chicken farms in business, you know, the egg throwing <laughs> and the toast. We used to call ourselves a toasted sandwich club and you got Adam Hillhan, Stephen King, all these blokes. They were from the bush as well. And it was just, the practical jokes were just endless and it was just an amazing place to be, mate. It was just get up the next day, go and check your house out, what was pinched, stolen, broken into. It was just amazing. It was you know, great. You know you drove Matthew Lloyd out of many ponds, don't you? Well, Matthew Lloyd, Scotty Lucas, I couldn't find out where Herdy he lived, but it was on my cards. <laughs> Mark McVeigh, all these blokes, even as a, like a ruck coach and being 30-odd, you know, they, were, they weren't off limits. And Sheeds was too far out of town, but it was everyone, it was anybody, we were just onto them. It didn't matter who it was, where they lived, we were just going to get them. Did your antics ever get you into serious trouble? Uh, no. Well, I've never been locked up. I've never been in the back of a divvy van. And I've never been in trouble, so whatever that's worth, so I've been a good boy. You pushed the line though, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I've been in deep water for a very long time, and someone once told me, uh, it's always up to your neck, it's mm -hmm. just uh, just don't drown, so I've been very, very close. <laughs> Those antics, did they ever have a ne negative impact on your football? Uh, footy to me was uh, just a game, Mike. It was something that uh, I just loved, and I was reasonably good at it. Do I take it too seriously? Probably not. Should I have? Probably. But, do, do, uh, do, you think, do you think now, on reflection, that you got the best out of your talents? Oh, no way. No but, way. No, nah, but it didn't, it, it didn't bother me. It's, uh, I just love playing footy. I love going there with my mates. And you're going to hear the same old thing. To me, having a beer after a game with my mates and the trainers and the opposition was what it was all about. And you learnt that as a kid in the country. But when you get to league level, it's different. Now, when, when we had Saturday games, which but, we don't seem to have anymore... Why would that be different? Well, you, you, you're playing Saturday football in the AFL... Tell me about the regime from there. Was it to the tunnel? Yep. Was, yes. Was Thursday night, mate's place, get on it, have a few beers. Thurs uh, you said Thursday night then. Oh, Thursday night. What's yeah. wrong? There's nothing wrong with having a beer on a Thursday night, Mike. In my book. Um, but you didn't have one beer, did you? No. Why would you have one? You know, one's not enough, a hundred's not enough either. What's that saying? A hundred's too many, one's not enough. So once you have one and you're in the right environment, you're going to have five or six or ten or whatever it one's is. One's too many and a hundred's not That's enough. That's what it yeah. is. And... Uh, it's amazing when you get in good company, you have the beers just slip past, and the time. Now, we're talking to you now, a celebrated league footballer, yep. a 200 gamer, yep. a premiership player. Yep. You're saying in your career yep. you would regularly drink on Thursday nights? Uh, out of 202 games, I would say 198 games, without a doubt, and sometimes Wednesdays. Is that a good drink or not? Or oh, just... definitely a good drink. Yeah. Sometimes Fridays to the point where a dozen stubbies wouldn't go astray. Dozen stubbies but on it, a Friday it night. It didn't worry me, Mike. It didn't affect my training. It didn't affect the way I played. I tried getting off the grog. Mm. Um, and it's not to the stage where you're, you're a pisshead or anything like that. It was just what it was. It was enjoyable. And I broke my arm, then I broke my jaw, and I thought, stuff this. I'm not going to be. I went down to Prim and Proper, lost my skinnies, got down to the absolute mess. And I might be talking shit or whatever it is, but to me, it didn't do me any good at all. And whatever you want to call it. So I just went there, I'm just stick to my routine and, and that's what it was. It was my routine and that's how I stuck with it. Your reputation precedes you a bit on this, but w did you ever have a drinking problem? Um, I'm probably a binge drinker in a stage, Mike, but as I said to you, mate, you tell, you, you tell your missus you're going down the pub to have five pots and you don't come back till six hours later, but that time flies. Because <laughs> the stories that you, you talk about, you look at your watch and you go, oh my God, we've got mm. to get home. But the, you don't go home, you go out and you go to the next pub. And that's how it is. And I'm not the only bloke that's done it. I'll just no, talk no. about it. That's what it is. No, but you did mix it between yep. football and, and, yep. and the grog, didn't lucky you? Lucky enough to be able to. Yep. One thing I had going for me, I could run. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to be is able to natural? run. Is that natural? And I'm not proud of what I'm about to say. I could, 
I could, uh, we play a game on a Saturday and she'd command a, pr- a, a run the next day at the tan and I could run straight out of the tunnel, put my running gear in the car without sleep and still run, you know. A, you know a, what, a fifth, do you remember what your best tan time was? A double tan, um, I think it was a 26.51 for a double tan. Yeah. Bruce Reed beat That's me home going. by 30 seconds yeah. and, he was, and I, was only, I was 18 at the time. But I was just a, a kid that just loved to run, and that's pretty much was the biggest asset I had. Given your off-field persona, it's easy to forget what an accomplished player you were. Now, you're probably not going to say that, but 21 finals, five grand finals, yep. one flag, 202 games. It's a pretty good record. Yeah, look, um, the grand finals, the losses, mate, they, they still hurt. So if I had to look back and, and say, did the drink have anything to do with that? It, it had nothing to do with that. I was always in the top three in the running groups at the footy club. And I'll tell you who taught me a really big lesson in footy was um, Malcolm Blight picked me to play on Jim Steins after I had a stink in 92. I wasn't playing that well. And he goes, I'm just going to give you a lucky break. And everyone needs a lucky break in footy. And he goes, I'm going to get you to tag Jim Steins. I went, well, no worries. And to this day, I tell everybody this, I didn't have a beer after the game because I couldn't. I was Mm. physically knackered. I was stuffed, mentally, physically rooted. So Jimmy ran that hard? He absolutely tore me a new ass. I thought I was fit. Mm. I was. I was the fittest at our club. But I wasn't, so I went away the next year and I trained my ass off and I got fitter again. Your first stay at Essendon, 12 games in the first four years, yep. then you missed all of 91, didn't you, with, yep. um, with your broken jaw? Yeah, two broken jaws. So you had five years in total at Essendon for yep. 12 games. Did they, did they sack you or did you seek an opportunity elsewhere? No, I was definitely sacked. That was, uh, Sean Denham went to Essendon yep. and you went to Geelong? Yep. Best yep. thing that happened to you, was Well, she always says it is. It's uh, given me another opportunity. Kevin Egan... Come and got me from trade school. I was doing turf management at the time, and he goes, "The you know, Sheeds wants to get rid of you." And I went, "Shit!" And that's when the penny dropped. I mm. went, "I don't want to play for you anymore." Mm. And then I had a chat with my old man. He said, "A lot of kids would give their left nut to be in your position." And I said, "Well, I'll come home for a bit." And we had a bit of a chat at home, and sat down. And I said, "Look, I'll give it one more go." And and obviously, Blighty, yeah, yeah, Blighty was, Blighty was an exceptional coach. Sheeds taught me Good everything. Good looking boy knew. there, mate. Sheeds taught me everything. I. Uh, all, everything I knew about the game as far as one percenters and, you know, everything that you need to know knowledge-wise about the game. But uh, Blighty taught me a lot about, mate, I don't mind what you do about footy, but if you stuff up, I'll hang you. Mm. And he sort of let me burn the candle at both ends. You played in the grand final your first year at July? Yeah, I did. Only, I think I played Coast. 13 or 14 games. Yeah. 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 And I, every time I see Blighty, I buy him a beer and say, mate, I owe my career to you. But you would have tested his patience a bit, Oh, definitely. You? There's a person's name I won't mention, but he said, I'm sacking a bloke today. It's not because he couldn't play footy, it's because he was a dickhead. Mm. And you're sitting on that fine line, so I'm giving you a warning. I'm not giving this bloke a warning. So w- w- are you t- is Blighty saying this to you? He was saying this to me. Yep. I won't mention the player's name he was giving the ass to. Uh, and he did say the other said that to me, and I yeah. said, I'm only giving you one chance, so this is how I operate. I said, I don't mind what you do, but this is how it'll run with me. You can go down this path, but you pull your frigging head in, or you're going as well. And I went, shit, and that really... Mm. Clock me, but I could have gone down the path of the thousand other footballers and, you know, gone back to the bush and, you know, become what every other bloke does. It sits at the bar at four o'clock in the morning and goes, yeah. I could have been that bloke, yeah, but yeah. yeah, I didn't. So I was yeah. lucky enough, I tipped the right way. Ninety-four, you played well in the grand final. Cats lost to West Coast. Yep. Uh, 90, yeah. Ninety. Ninety-two. Ninety-two. Yep. 92. How'd you go in ninety-four and ninety-five? Ninety-four. Uh, well, not real. Not real great. I wouldn't say. Probably held my own a bit. Ninety-five. I got a, you know, Justin Madden. Big fella. Um, probably beat me in the hit-outs. Ran possession-wise, it probably went OK. But the possessions were good, but Madden yeah. had a big influence. Yeah, though, he does. He? Just, just his influence with the yes, to advantage to Bradley mm. and blokes like that. And Williams was a bit damaging. So I he's 6'10". Yeah, 6'10". You were 6'3". So it's 209 versus 193. Yeah. It's a bit hard, but yeah. I enjoyed it. The bigger the blokes were, the bigger the challenge I enjoyed. The year's 2000. You're back at Essendon. Yep. You're playing a premiership team. It's your 180th game. Yep. Must have been... Clearly the highlight of your entire career. Yeah, it was, uh, I get goosebumps just thinking about yeah. it, Mike. I talk about it sometimes when I do sportsman's nights and stuff. But oh, so you, Did you go straight moment. to your, your mate Dean Wallace? Yeah, I was on the bench at, at the time because yeah. I, I didn't realise this, but Steve Valesio only played about 15 minutes of the game. And I'd played nearly, well, as I said, I played all of it. And I'm on the bench and I'm asking Dipper how long. You know, every 10 seconds, how long, Dipper? And he's going, Barnes, you relax. <laughs> siren will go, you'll be right. And when the siren went, I just ran straight out to Wally and... You know, there was only one word I could say. It was yes. I said yes about a hundred times, mm. and I cried, and he started crying, and we hugged, and yeah, all the relief and the effort that had paid off, and 
I was just lucky enough I got one. A lot of blokes haven't got one. You've been at Geelong for eight years. Yep. It's a long time to be at a club and then to have your first club come back and say that we want you back. Yep. Now, how did that come about? Was it was it Sheed's drive or you had a couple of strong mates, that, didn't you, Mark Harvey? Yeah, Harv's, Harv's a very good, big advocate. I've gotten easier a bit. At, uh, I lived in Essendon, not far from um, Buckley Street, and Adrian Dodoro was a recruiting bloke, as you know. I used to park my car near Buckley Street, get out, put water on my chest, and run as he'd car would come over the hill <laughs> and wait till he passed and walk back down the street, get me car and, and go home. Yeah, <laughs> just, I did that for about four weeks and Adrian Adoro said to Sheeds, we've got to pick up Barnsley. He's running up Buckley Street flat out every day. And I'm going and I'm putting in the yards and got a knock on my door at Sheeds. He comes around and says, I think we're going to pick you up, you know, about pick 40. I went, oh, grouse. And the next day I go into the swimming pool and, and uh, Dennis Pagan's in the pool going, he calls me Jack. And he goes, we're looking for a ruckman at North. I said, oh, grouse, I've got a double-edged sword here. It's mm. going to be good. And come draft day, I go up to Lynn and Bernie Colbert's house because the kids are only young. And at least parents. Yeah, Lee yep. Colbert's parents. they got a yabby farm up there. I was up there more for the yabbies than anything else. And um, we're sitting there watching the TV and pick 40 comes up and my name wasn't mentioned. David Hill got picked. So I've cracked the shits. I've gone, typical, Essendon's <laughs> done this thing again. And so I've gone outside with Bernie. I've gone, well, there you go. I'm stuck on whatever games it was, 170 or 60-odd. And... I'm sitting there, I'm pretty pissed off and I've cracked my first W. And Lynn Colbert comes out and goes, John, you got picked. I'm going, Lynn, don't piss me off now, I'm not in the mood. And it all came about. She goes, no, no, you really did. I'm going, Lynn, don't bullshit me, I'm over it. And she goes, come in here. So I've come in and uh, there it is, Kevin Sheen saying you've been drafted. And I've gone, well, bugger me. And bang, had a few beers out and played golf. And Number 59. That was a 59, was it? Yeah. Well, there you go. So you go back to Essendon. Yep. Now tell me if this story's right or wrong. It's um, training. Yep. Matty Lloyd over the back, the ball comes to him and you say, hey Lloyd, you're nothing but a sheep dog. Yep. The coach, Kevin Sheedy, calls you in. Yep. Barnes in here. Yep. What do you say to you then? Uh, he took a mark with doing match simulation, as you do, and he's lined up for goal. I called him a sheep dog because he got one out the back. Mm -hmm. And he's lined up for goal and I'm calling him all the grouse names you're doing footy. <laughs> uh, Sheedy goes, get over here. And I go, he goes, 10 400s. And I go, what? And you don't back chat your coach. And he, I got to about 6 400s and he comes in and he goes, you don't Talk to a, like a future champion like that. You were a sledger, weren't you, on the ground? So I sledge me up, mate. That's all I do. Yeah. I've, two things I try and teach my kids now. Sledge your, sledge your ass off because it's good. And two, just run everywhere you can if you can and just give it to them. Every second you get, just sledge, sledge, sledge. And as a runner, mate, I love sledging as a runner as well because it got me into more stuff. I heard that. Then you can poke a stick at. Did you not get suspended for mm -hmm. interfering with... Two weeks and a 25 grand fine. For doing what? For interfering. Apparently I called a player... A, a, an effing idiot. And that's interfering with players, eh? Well, they were waiting for you, though, weren't they? Oh, guaranteed. That's yeah. that's horses for courses, Mike. Like if that had to be me, Nigel Lappin on the Reddit Kid Number Twelve. I would have got life, guaranteed. <laughs> you used to spend more time on the ground than the sub does these days, though, didn't it's you? It's because I had the most messages. She <laughs> wouldn't use the other runner. I had, the, and I'm not the best speller and rider at the best of times, but my list was twelve inches long. I had, all, it, I won't lie to you. She would give me all the messages. And you don't think I'm smart, Mike? I'm very, very no, smart. No, no, no. I, yours, I, I know you're smart I, like a fox. I you just are. and when the, the acid was on, she's always go to his best runner. I should have been all Australian runner, <laughs> but they never have it.